Hello and welcome, my dear friends, part two of the Mighty Seven. Our people call them the Magnificent Seven, I call them the Mighty Seven. Um, you know that these are all solid stocks and they all performed very well in the current year. And now the question is which of these stocks will also perform very well with high capital gains in the next year. And this depends on the valuation of the stocks and nothing else because they all have a very solid business model with mode. And uh, so valuation is the key in this question. And let's check the valuation. My name is Torsten. I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Cash. We have more than 100,000 members here. It's all about long-term investing here. And we are able to tell you if the stock is a high quality stock, which is good, suitable for long-term investing, or if it's not. And we can also tell you if the stock is over or undervalued. And you will see right now how it works for the remaining four of the seven mighty seven. We also already analyzed Apple, Microsoft and Alphabet in the last video. If you haven't seen, have a look here. I'll link the video and now Amazon, Nvidia, Meta and Tesla. Let's go. We have here in our screener seven columns, eight columns even, indicating the valuation to give you a first idea about the valuation. We have here the multiples, price earnings, one time based on reported, the second time based on adjusted earnings, based on operating cash flow, price to cash flow and price to sales. And then we have here four columns and they indicate the fair value. It seems to be undervalued this stock if the number is negative and we have it written in green, overvalued if the number is positive. And regarding Amazon, we have very low price to sales because it's low margin business. Amazon is low margin business, the online trading merchandising. And uh, we have here high or normal multiples because low valuation based on sales, but low margins produce not so much earnings, which means this makes the, or lets the price to earnings inflate, okay? We can see the low margins here. We have operating margins of just above 6% uh, coming down in the, in the last business year by half, about only 2.6%, but very positive. Now margins come back within the last quarter, five quarters to 5%. You see that uh, Amazon is a little bit more cyclical than the, or, or more cyclical than our mighty seven stocks. They even uh, had uh, report, rep reported losses in 22. The balance sheet is also not as rock solid as the balance sheet of the other Mighty Sevens. For example, here we had a negative amortization power, which means negative free cash flow. And we have more interest bearing debt than cash in the balance. Often uh, companies like Microsoft, uh, Tesla and others, they have more cash than interest bearing debt. So let's go to the multiples and you see that from year to year, MS, the, Amazon, uh, mul uh, the multiple of Amazon goes down. So it deflates, the stock gets cheaper. Uh, contrary to, for example, uh, Apple, you see that based on price earnings, Apple was long time always cheaper than Amazon was. And Beginning of current year, this changed. And now, Apple is more expensive than Amazon, although the earnings growth of Amazon, the estimated earnings growth of Amazon, is higher than the earnings growth of Apple. You can see it that here, that the uh, estimated uh, price earnings of Amazon goes down faster than the price earnings of Apple, okay? Anyway, if you want to create, calculate the fair value of the stock, then you don't take, I don't take the price earnings, but 
rather the operating cash flow because it has longer and better history than the uh, price earnings here. And you can, but you can also take the price to sales ratio to calculate the fair value. If I make the user the operating cash flow out of the box, you get this. And you see that in the past, it correlates very well with the stock price, the calculated fair value. But here you get extraordinarily high um, expected yields, 33% annualized for the next years, which is extremely high. And I'm always very careful when I see something like this. Of course it is because the um, operating cash flow, the estimated operating cash flow uh, goes to record levels according to analysts and this is why the fair value also goes to record levels. I feel more safe personally if I use the sales to calculate the fair value of Amazon and if I take the sales I get something like this out of the box. And so you see that right now Amazon seems to be fairly valued and then we have an expected annual yield of 10%, which to me seems much more realistic than using the operating cash flow as valuation metric. Um, disclaimer or background info, if you use the price to sales to calculate the fair value of the stock, you need to pay attention that the margins are more or less stable. First hand, this is not the case uh, for Amazon. Margins are not that stable, they fluctuate, but they are right now on, on high level, 5% operating margin is high if you compare it with the history and in my point of view margins will increase in future because the, um, um, the, the, the cloud business of Amazon is growing faster than the online business and it's has higher margins. It should translate into higher margins in the future, in the long term. This is why I can use or why I feel fine to use price to sales as indicator or calc calculation metric for the fair value. So low double digit uh, growth or capital gains for Amazon in my point of view this sounds realistic. Uh, what I should also say, uh, I do not recommend you buy any stock. Please make your own thoughts first before uh, triggering the buy button. So that was Amazon. Next one is Nvidia. Nvidia has incredibly, or not incredibly, but very high um, multiples. For example, price to sales is close to 28, which indicates a high profit business or a high margin business. Okay. But also, the con exactly the, the, the contrary to Amazon, but we have here also relatively high or very high multiples. And we have very high capital gains year to date, more than tripled, tri tripled and again 50% the stock uh, made in the running year. But that does not, it does not mean uh, that the stock uh, is completely overvalued. Even if this is, is this indicated here? Yes, it's indicated here. If you use the 10 year historic valuation, it indicates that the stock is overvalued. Is it really the case? We skip the quality check. That's uh, quality is okay. Uh, we go to the multiples immediately. And there's something interesting you see here that till 2017 Nvidia was not was lower valued than afterward. Here we have high fluctuation or high volatility of the multiples, but here it was low valued. And this means that if we want to calculate the fair value of Nvidia, we need to start from around 2017 because the multiples here were too low and if you use them to calculate the average multiples, you, the average multiple is too low to calculate the fair value. And right now we have this fair value about 50 something. And you see that multiples were already higher 
in 22 or as high as today uh, in the months following the corona crash. What we also see here already is that the multiples go down very fast in the near future because obviously analysts estimate high earnings growth in the quality check. You can see it very well. It already started and it should continue according to analysts. Of course, this is thanks to artificial intelligence boom. Not going into detail here. And if we look at the fair value, then you see here Nvidia is an all-time high, but let's add here the earnings growth. You see that the earnings are also an all-time high. And maybe it is reasonable that the stock market uh, sends the stock price up so much. The answer comes now with the uh, fair value. You see that the fair value soon, soon should um, be higher than the current stock price. And now I told you that we are going to calculate the fair value of Nvidia, not based on 10 years, but on starting from 2017. And this will even increase the fair value more. So you see the fair value went up. And if we now look at the expected, uh, the fair value should be close to 970 US dollar in the beginning of 26 which uh, translates to an annual expected yield of 37% till then. So there's still much earnings potential, or much potential for capital gains on this stock. If you believe in the hype around artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, and so on. Let's go to the next one, which is Meta. Meta is much it's much lower multiples compared to NVIDIA. You will see it here. And the stock seems to be undervalued even according to each metric we offer here. Um, let's go look at the performance. To make it short, 180% year to date. It's also very uh, solid performance. If we Look a little bit, last five years, you see first it went down the stock price, then the stock price went up again. And the same as Nvidia, it does not indicate this, that the stock uh, was already running hot. Maybe we have still high potential for 24 as well, because here, if you look at the price to earnings, for example, it's about 20, the same as Alphabet, the other stock which makes his money with advertisement and advertisement is always lower valued than uh, for example Nvidia or Tesla more hardware related earnings. So let's look at the multiples same as Amazon on the long run Meta got less expensive. Let's calculate the fair value and uh, to do so I would use um, also the earnings starting from 2017 uh, based on report, no, based on adjusted earnings because it's, it's slightly screwed here, right? Let's check if it gets better. Okay. No, it's slightly screwed. I don't know why here, but we continue. Um, I say you that in the past, we had here price to earnings, which were a little bit too high, between th around 40 in the past. And I think it should be, ah, now it's okay again. I think we make valuation starting from 2080 maybe for this stock to calculate the fair value. It's more representative. And if we do so, we get a fair value here. You see this, I zoom in a little. And now you see that the stock seems to be fairly valued right now. So it was heavily undervalued uh, in 22 till end of 22. And uh, now we have fair value back on fair value again. And we have an expected annual yield of around yeah, 12, 12.7%. The future of Meta, my point of view, depends on monetization of WhatsApp with around 3 billion users, if this succeeds or not. 
and in the longer run if the metaverse succeeds, yes or not. Ah, something which is interesting I want to show you is, which was this, my point of view nice, is that the margin decline of uh, Facebook starting in 2018 right now was reversed, operating margin increased from 29 to 36%. Thanks to in first place cost reduction, you can see it in the profit and loss statement where the operating expense first time for since years went down from 22 to the last four quarters from 68 to around less than 67 billion US dollar. So cost cutting is responsible for growing margin first place. So that's Facebook and the last one is Tesla. Tesla in analyzing Tesla in five minutes, including fair valuation, is very challenging, but we can do it anyway. You see here that according to uh, price earnings and price to cash flow, it's even higher value than Nvidia. Okay, the performance of in the year to date of Tesla is solid with 134% capital gains, but you see that all these capital gains were achieved in the first half of the year and then the next month was high volatility and the stock uh, even declined a little bit. For, was said, so Nvidia is not an all-time high, especially if you compare the last five years when the stock was already as high as 410 US dollar. Now we are 260 US dollar above. To calculate the fair value, we go here not only to the multiples chart, here you can see the multiples chart, and you can see here that uh, Tesla was ridiculously, very cheap at the end of the year. I also told this publicly several times when they had the price earnings of about the same as Coca-Cola had, Nvidia, and now the stock price recovered and we are back here to multiples price earnings and price to cash flow for somewhere around 70 and it will even go up according to uh, the price to price to earnings will even go up a little bit because you know we have problem right now with declining margin margins we have uh, Tesla aggressively expanding their volume of produced and delivered cars and we have this high inflation environment with pending recession and to uh, sell all their cars, they went down with the margin. You know all this, but we also have rock-solid uh, balance sheet here, 2018, close to bankruptcy, and now rock-solid balance sheet, completely debt-free. Uh, go to the valuation here. It's difficult to calculate the fair value of Tesla, we do it anyway, based on the operating cash flow. If we add this one, we have here price to cash flow. We zoom in a little and then we see yes, a crazy valuation when Tesla was overvalued. Here when Tesla was very cheap and now we are close to the fair value. Okay, And we can here uh, create this little line and then you have an expected yield, annual yield of 14%. You get the same, by the way, I think, huh? if we use the price to sales, then we also have expected yield of 14.3% with a fair value of 386 US dollar in end of 26, which is still below the stock price of or where the stock was in the end of 21. So, uh, this is Tesla. I now really made it and <laughs> made the evaluation of the re reminding or remaining four mighty seven stocks. So now it's up to you which of this stock is not only a solid investment, but which of this stock do you think will shine with high capital gains in the next year in 24? Please write me a comment below, happy to discuss. Thank you for watching this video and see you next video. Bye bye.